to an episode of This Is My Burger Podcast. Another episode, I guess. An episode? Yes, this is an episode, but it's also another episode. It's episode 240 of This Is My Burger Podcast. We've gone a long way. Ten weeks, and we got 250. 250. We've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Perry. With me this week, as he always is, it's our co-host, Eric Smith, the Whiskey Mutant. Hi, Eric. I'd kick somebody in the balls for you. You know that, right? I do know that. Um, I know that so much, so much, so much, so much, so so much that um, I I know that you would get restricted on Facebook. You'd go to Facebook jail for a few days for me. Yeah. So if you're listening and you care about somebody so much that you would kick somebody else in the balls for them, don't say it on Facebook or don't you'll say it on Facebook. get in Facebook jail. They consider it an act of aggression. Yeah, for some reason, I don't I've know. Considered why. an act of love. It feels it feels like love. Yeah, I mean, love definitely feels like getting kicked in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what a fun it's, what a fun stupid some, analogy we've made up. <laughs> it's the love of somebody doing such an act of terror for them. That's the love. Maybe we should stop saying act of terror when we're talking about loving an act of passion. Else. Okay, just don't um, say that on Facebook because apparently you'll get banned. You'll get in, you'll get banned. You'll get in trouble. You'll have yeah. posts removed. You'll have um, people talking about you on Facebook, and you can't reply to them. Yeah, so <sighs> that's unfortunate. I yes. uh, if you are here for the first time, thank you so much for checking out the show. Uh, if you're returning. Thank you so much for coming back. For sticking I hope you've around. been well. Thank you for sticking around. If you've not subscribed yet, whether it's on YouTube where you may be watching this video uh, of the podcast or maybe you're listening to it in your audio feed of your favorite podcast app, uh, please do subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating and review. Uh, we haven't gotten one in a few weeks, but we do read every <coughs> oh gosh, every review out here uh, yeah. on the podcast. Good, bad, ugly beautiful kick us in the balls whatever it is that um passionate you know. aggressive whatever if you want to leave us a comment that you want us to read out on on the show too uh yeah. leave, leave it on the video version and we'll read it we'll read it out here do it um even if it's a bot even if it's a russian bot it's a bot <laughs> see them right now click here beep 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 beep, beep. <laughs> Uh, what else? Live. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> uh, find all of our apparel and merchandise at bourbonshop.threadless.com or whiskeymutant.shopify.com. Uh, you can also send us questions or comments to this my bourbon shop at gmail.com. Um, follow us on social media at my bourbon pod and at whiskey mutant. And you can also support the show, the big super duper extra special one. Yeah. Uh, support the show on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month for as little as $5 a month. You get bonus content and we are vastly, vastly quickly approaching, quickly. um, the most important month of the year. Big uh, which, ass August. Mine and Eric's uh, birthday month. Where we're going to be doing a little Patreon pledge drive. Uh, chock full of surprises and some bonus content and uh, uh, lots of stuff. Lots, lots of good of stuff. stuff. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I'll talk about... Um, well, not really a couple of weeks. Uh, it's like a week and a half. So... During that time, uh, I'll be letting people know some of the benefits that they can get by hopping on the Patreon. Uh, Going to be changing around some tiers, have some mm. new some new goodies, some good stuff. Mm, not my goodies. <laughs> not my goodies. I'm even thinking about including a Patreon tier where each month somebody gets an exclusive pairing from the Whiskey Mutant. I can do that. Yeah. I can do some exclusive shit. Okay. I figured you could. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. all about being exclusive. All right. I know. We're both married. Not to yeah. each other. Not to each other. We're not married to each other. We're married to... What? <laughs> oh. Huh? 
I need to make some calls. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to talk about this on the show. <laughs> yes, that's why we're clearly in two different locations. <laughs> it's all fake. On He's a really sun, right on a over Sunday there. Night. It's just we made two sets. Two oh, wait, I'd be looking that way, wouldn't I? Sorry, my camera's mirrored. We made two completely different sets. In our so house. Could, yeah, but we're in the same room, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to do housekeeping before we get, uh, or at, before the sips and snacks or after? We'll do it after. We'll do it after. Yeah, we'll do it uh, after. Because um, it's really hot out here. <laughs> oh, and we got a special sips and snacks We got a tonight. special sips and snacks, um, and mine is getting soupy. <laughs> okay, I don't, I have, I have it in a bowl because, oh. well, the problem oh, no. is it, it's 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 not AC. There's no AC out here. There's no air control, um, air conditioning. So uh, my if ice you're cream listening well, right now, can you guess what we're eating based on all the stuff Perry just said? You got five seconds. Five, four, three, three, two, one. Okay, two, one. <laughs> it's ice cream. And not only it's not little just Debbie ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> we got the yes, the nutty bar. Oh, the Nutty Bars ice cream. I'm so excited about this Man. one. Man. Um, this has been one of my favorites out of all of them that we've had so far. There's one that I cannot wait for us to try together. I might have to bring it over to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, okay. Just because it's it's spectacular. It's really, okay. really good stuff. Okay. Um, but yes, this is the Nutty Bar. Little Debbie ice cream. Yes, it is. And Eric and I were talking about this earlier, and I said, well, why don't we pair this with a nutty bourbon? Oh. Have you not even tried this yet? This is the first time. Dude. I just opened it. I literally just opened it. It's so good, right? Oh, this one is great. Oh. Got a little crunch of the chocolate and stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And the, the ice cream is like the peanut butter part. Yep. Oh, peanut butter like like a like a Reese's ice cream. Mm. Not yeah, exactly it, that, but like peanut butter ice cream with chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's like one of my favorites. Eating, yeah. oh. And the only thing that I would, uh, uh, hands down, though, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream is my favorite. And it, the only thing that makes it better is when it's like chocolate chip peanut butter cookie dough ice cream. Oh yeah, baby. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, That's man. where it's at for me. Before Eric's just going to eat ice cream the rest of the episode. But Sorry. Um, we got to pair this, and I'm letting Perry do the pairing today. Well, I figured we'd go with the Nutty Bourbon, and I figured, why not just go all out? I mean, we could have we gone with some with a Knob Creek single barrel, but I feel too like that's... Too easy. Too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. Everybody would expect that. So, I thought... Why not find something else in that uh, that category and go with the old Granddad 114? Oh, yeah, baby. So, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do some kind of like pour over situation? Okay, I think we try it two ways. I think we do a little bite of ice cream and then take a sip, okay. see what that does, and then I think we just straight up. You got a bowl. I got a little section on the corner. I'll just pour a little bit in there, and we'll just mix it up. Hmm. Oh, wow. Interesting. I don't know if I'm completely on board with that. It's a little spicy for it. A little bit. I'm afraid the bourbon's going to, like, curdle the ice cream somehow. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Do it like... It is better if you've, like, poured it over the ice cream. Oh. Poured it into it. So much That's better. like a boozy milkshake. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. Ooh, that's really good. That's really, really good. Yeah, definitely do a, uh, you could even, like I just did, I took some and put it in the spoon, and I poured the bourbon in the spoon with it. That's what I, that's what I did. 
Oh, I wasn't watching. Sorry, I was too. That's all right. I was too into this right now. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Oh yeah, cause like the that rice spice in there gets in with the peanuts, and it's almost turns it cinnamon like. Let me let me ask you this because you are our resident. <laughs> I'm I'm something. <laughs> You're our resident uh, snack cake czar. Mm-hmm. Um, what does the existence of snack cake ice cream mean to you as far as like snacking goes? Like, um, it, does it does it make it? more difficult for you are you finding that i mean honestly difficult, but like what what has it like done for you as far as like the snacking game goes it's not really changed anything other than it was just it's just been something fun to try to find because it's not really just everywhere so it's and more of like a novelty than yeah, anything like yeah. this i didn't even find this lucy found this for us and she bought she was nice enough to buy me some too when she that bought you true. some um, because it's not like this is like life changing. I mean, this is good, but this isn't like, this isn't, when I take a bite of this ice cream, it tastes so good, but it's not like I'm biting into a nutty bar. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of got, it's just got its own thing. So this to me is just like a, like a special, like, you know, like a bourbon or a whiskey that. You know, it's it was something specially finished. You're going to get it to try it. You're going to enjoy it, but it's not going to change you. You're not going to go out and try to find every, you know, peanut butter finished whiskey now or something like that. Like, you know, it it probably we probably would have had a, an even better experience had we tried like screwball with it. Oh, that would. Probably really fucking good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, pretty good. <laughs> but I don't I feel like screwball is like it would be like screwball mixed in this and then bourbon added to it. Like I feel like screwball is just That's another fair. another thing to add to it. Yeah. This 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 is really good ice cream. It's just really straight up good ice cream, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't um, change it. It's not like, ooh, I'm I love nutty bar ice cream more than the actual bar because yeah. no. Like no, it, I, I agree with you. But here, and you haven't tried all of the, the ice creams, right? Mm-mm. I don't think that the the quality of all of the this is this is insane that we're talking about this on a bourbon podcast. But <laughs> the, the quality of all of the the ice creams, you know, it, it, they don't all line up with how good some of the snack cakes are. Gotcha. Like it, it, there there are some distinct differences between their their original counterparts and these versions. Is this the only one that you hadn't tried, or have you tried the other ones now too? I haven't tried any. I was saving them for pairings and stuff. <laughs> so now that one's open, does that mean the floodgate has just been? <laughs> I don't know. We could do like four weeks straight of sips and snacks and just eat ice cream. Do you want to do that? We could. We could I've, got, do I've, got, next I've got two more for you too. I'm down. How about this? How about this? Um, we could do starting for big ass August. <laughs> oh yeah, big ass August. We could do the ice creams for sips and snacks every week. Okay. And then back to September. Get to si- once we get to simply another month September. Blind sample September. Ooh, I like that. Mm. So, oh, that yeah, was a there's good a there's though. a plan. Who says we don't know how to make plans? We Has anybody ever plans. said that about us? <laughs> probably. You're probably like, what the? Did they even plan this? What out? are they doing? What are they talking about? He's gonna but kick somebody is... in the balls over something. <laughs> it's so good, he's gonna kick somebody else in the balls. I don't get it. Um. I, I recommend this ice cream. I like this. I do too. I could not resist that uh, ice cream, that sample. Um, there he is. There's my guy doing a bottle chug of old Granddad One Fourteen. Dude, that's a good pairing. Like I know at first you're like I don't know about 
Well, I think it was because I was mostly eating ice cream soup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. I think any, like you said, I think any nutty thing will go with this. Because it's mainly a peanut butter forward ice cream. Yeah. Unless you want to switch it up and try something different. But I think, nah. I think it... I'm I'm good. I'm out of ice cream right now and God I've killed, I've almost got half of this whole thing going. <laughs> I mean I probably could have eaten most of it. I'm not a big sweets guy. Like just categorically I'm not. There it's not, not a my big go-to. Ice cream guy. I love ice ice cream is one of those few things that I will I will make an exception for. But even even still I'm not like I don't know. Uh, it, like, it's not a one hundred percent of the time. It's like thing. a it's like a going out treat for me. Like, I usually don't eat ice cream. Yeah, like it's like yeah. if I'm out or on vacation or something. Vacations like, yeah, let's get, for let's sure. Get a big ice cream. You know? Vacations for sure mm-hmm. are when I will eat ice cream the most. Um, but speaking of vacations, I just got back from a, a, a trip. You did. Um, and uh, I'm I'm tired. <laughs> we're uh, we're recording this. Late the night after I uh, I got home, uh, at this time last night I was just crossing over into Kentucky. <laughs> oh God, that drive! <laughs> yeah, <coughs> I'm fine. Choked him up. Choked him up. Got me. Got me in my feels. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about a little bit of housekeeping before we go any further. Um. I guess we've already kind of talked about the big Patreon month, which is coming up real soon. Uh, the other thing, and I, hesi- I hesitate to put all of our eggs in this basket, but at least for the month of... <laughs> I had no idea what drink that was. Um, just a caffeine-free Diet Coke. It is. That's, that's yes, sir. the fastest thing I could grab. Yeah. Um, but for at least the month of August... Uh, we are going to see the return of none other than Swan. <laughs> if you're on the Facebook group, you have already seen his return. He's yeah. like he's like somebody out of jail that just learned what the internet was. Swan is, um, and he's a coward. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. The ice cream is uh, messing with me. Getting that scratchiness in your throat. Yeah, I know it. I know yeah. that feel. So Swan is moving back to Kentucky. Um, I will let it be his story to tell or not tell. Uh, but he is he is returning. So at least for about a month consistently. Um, bless you, Swan is going to be on the show again. He he will still be around more frequently than he has before, um, but I'm pretty excited. We haven't had three, uh, well, I guess two co-hosts and then the main host on uh, <laughs> three three co-hosts. <laughs> but we haven't we haven't had three people in front of mics uh, in a long time. I mean, it's been since. Uh, the better part of COVID started um, when uh, when Curtis and Swan were were on the show. So I'm I'm really really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be chaos. And my my goal. See, I hesitate to like give this away, but I'm I want to do it in some capacity. Um. Like I said at the top of the episode, we are 10 episodes away from our 250th. And I mean, that that means that, I mean, we got stuff we got to do. We got to do some big uh, We're announcements. We're halfway to 500. Golly, I hadn't even thought about that. We get to 500 episodes and it's just like my dad and <laughs> Whiskey Morgue downloading the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones that's it <laughs> that's all that's listening but i uh i want to do something some other special stuff for it uh episode 100 we had all four of the uh the co-hosts on that had been a part of the show before uh or all four of the people who had been on the show 
And so I kind of think by 250, I'd like to have the five of us all sitting down together for something. <laughs> they look Dude, at me I, and they listen. They're like, this is what this show's become. What has I'm happened? Like, what has become of them? What? Shut up. I used to listen to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm also, like I said, just super tired. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep pouring some granddad 114 before we get to this review. But, oh, granddaddy. <laughs> yeah, we got a bunch of news this week. Um, we got some, some shifts happening again, uh, within the industry. Some divisional got, shifts. <laughs> feels like it. Uh, we got some new releases. We got some new destinations within uh, the bourbon industry uh, and some pretty fantastic uh, new labels across the TTV. But first and foremost, let's start out with a big, <laughs> another big change, unfortunately, coming to Green River Distillery. Their master distiller, Jacob Call, is going to be leaving. Um right after we broke that exclusive yeah i it, i you know what's weird is that the the main thing that we were told with uh, the merger between green river and bardstown bourbon company is that it was it was more of a partnership than it was anything so what are we seeing now with their master distiller leaving <laughs> that might indicate that they weren't as like <clears throat> I don't maybe not people centric as they were kind of I, identifying that they were. But what 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 is it about this new step forward that he is not feeling right. comfortable with? Was 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 it a hey we want you to change this or that or you know that's what it made me feel like. It's like well, and and the word that they used is bittersweet. Like, I don't, I don't ever know even, I feel like that word is just used and you're just like, what does that even mean? It's just a it, bittersweet it, yeah. symphony that's like. <laughs> bittersweet. That does not um, mean <clears throat> it was sweet or bitter. There's something else when you yeah. say bittersweet. Uh, it does say that Call is going to remain in the bourbon industry, though, but he is not at liberty to announce uh, what's happening next for him because he is under a non-compete until Ooh. October 31st. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I just, it, I, it feels like a bummer to me. Right. <laughs> yeah, because because I feel like it was. This has been like a roller coaster for us because we got Green River, mm -hmm. and we love that bottle. And then we heard that this was happening. We were kind of like, "How's this going to affect everything?" Then we got that little, you yeah. know, that little touch that was like, "Well, nothing's going to change. It's you know, it's just a partnership." It's <laughs> and literally little, one of the biggest changes that could happen with yeah. a distillery. And then happened we turned almost around immediately. And, yeah, almost so it's been immediately. Like a roller coaster with this, and I'm Gosh. just waiting for the single barrels to come out. Just ridiculous, man. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, but I, I think it's best to just say that we wish everything well for for jacob and um i'm curious what i'm curious who what what the next step is for for green river now and uh who they might be maybe our anonymous source might be able to give us some information we'll find out um he's like i'm the distiller now <laughs> <laughs> it's all come to my plan is all come to me. <laughs> It's Dixon. Dixon becomes the master distiller there. <laughs> Dixon. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Big boo. <laughs> that was more Matthew McConaughey. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hey. Um, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Dixon. Hey, it's Dixon. Hey, it's Dixon. 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 Rising like a, out of the ashes of the phoenix. So Buffalo Trace has got a new... <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> a new dining destination, they're calling it, uh, for 2023. Hmm. Um, 
It says in terms of... Uh, no, wait, hold on. Is this where they're taking over the gas station below the distillery? It, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if they just took that gas station and they just gutted it and they turned it into like a little like 50s or 60s diner? It'd be like Pigeon Forge. Oh, it totally would be. Yeah. Would you be upset about that if that were the thing that happened? No. I don't think I would be either, but at the same time, I'd be like, why is this what Buffalo Trace put millions of dollars into? Fuck gas. Can't afford it anyway, so might as well <laughs> make me a restaurant out of it. Dude, uh, traveling back home, um, we saw we saw gas for um, 360 Damn. Yeah, it was it was a nice little surprise. That's nice. Um, Can't even get that with my Kroger points right now. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I I don't know. I mean, like I'm excited for this. I'm curious to see what it's like. I'm hoping that we get some kind of like you know preview to it and everything. Um, but the gas station is going to stop operating in tw- uh, in August in big ass August. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday death days. <laughs> um. <laughs> They anticipate that the groundbreaking for the new tourism and dining destination will take place in fall of this year with a grand opening target of summer 2023. So, be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that when you're waiting I on blends. I suppose. I, Copper and Kings. Wait, Copper and Kings? Yeah, Copper and Kings. I did thought maybe it was Copper and King. Anyway. I, they have their very first bourbon coming out. But there's a twist. Uh-oh. There's only one way to get it. Uh-oh. You ready for this? Oh, Lord. In a bundle. You have to buy you... the gin or whatever. No. Oh. You have to go to the distillery, go on a particular tour called the Barrel to Bottle Experience, and then you can fill your own bottle. <laughs> oh, okay. that's how you get it. That's how you get it. That's that's a great. That's great. That's, I'm not mad at that. I I'm thought you were going to say something else, but like, so you can't. They're not going to send it to any stores or anything. You doesn't have to look do the, like it. Oh, at okay. least at least not right now. I um, like the exclusivity of that. Yeah, I do too. If it's really good, then. I guess I'm going to have to do it. Here's the thing. the Everything that has come from Copper and Kings has been so good. I mean, I have not had anything that has been subpar or just crap. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this. I genuinely am. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I've been burned by Castle and Key, but... Uh, also, apparently the the newer v- batches of Castle and Key are already out. Like batches three and four. Never even heard of it. Yeah. Coming out. Yeah, exactly. But who's that? Apparently they're out there. Okay. So we'll get to it eventually. Uh, but anyway, the uh, the tour experience is thirty five dollars, and then uh, you do have to pay for the bottle itself at right. sixty five dollars afterwards. That's not bad. Um, That's just like the heavy I don't have thing. any problem with that. You pay for the tour, and then you can buy the bottle if you want. Yeah. Uh, it also looks like there are two different finishes, so it is actually a finished bourbon, um, interestingly enough. Mm. I, I'm okay with that. I mean, like, that's kind of their gimmick anyway. Or not gimmick, necessarily. Oh. That's their their brand. It's a brandy company, you yeah. know? So they're they're taking their bourbon, and they're finishing it in barrels of stuff that they also made. Um, but it looks like the the bourbon is going to be oh it's sourced bourbon actually. All right, uh, aged between five and six years and finished for thirteen months in Copper and Kings American brandy barrels. Uh, in total, this first release includes fourteen single barrels finished in either apple or grape brandy barrels. Ooh, grape brandy? Yeah. Don't know what the hell that tastes like, but I'd love to try it. How about this? Uh, we each get one. <laughs> we'll just take a field trip. Sure. That sounds do, sounds good we'll, to me. Well, they let us record while we do the tour and while we feel an exclusive recording. I'm sure they them. I'm sure they would let us. And then we yeah. get to like sit down and taste stuff with them and yeah. bottle our own. And, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we could do that. Tell what's our birthday. I'll Big get on the <laughs> 
I will, uh, I'll be sure to get on the horn and see what we can do about that. You want to talk about some new releases? Yeah. Anything I'd kick anybody in the balls for? <clears throat> I don't know yet. All right. I don't know. We're going to find out. Uh, Heaven's Door, Bob Dylan's bourbon brand. Uh, they have a decade series coming out. This is release number one. It's a 10-year-old bourbon, 100 proof, and $99 a bottle. It's Tennessee bourbon going to be available right now in a limited quantity. Uh, Whiskey Advocate says Heaven's Door has announced the Decade Series, a collection of small batch sourced whiskeys, all 10 years or older. The first release is a 10-year-old high ride Tennessee bourbon, 22% rye, that is neither chill filtered nor charcoal mellowed. Oh, and comes from a lot of 290 barrels. So not Dickel. Not Dickel, apparently. Oh, you have my attention, Tennessee. I would not be opposed to trying that. <laughs> Uh, let's see what's next. The new Woodford Reserve Batch Proof, the 2022 edition, has been announced. It's going to be 118.4 proof, $130 per bottle. Uh, going to be out this month as well and in a limited quantity. Uh, the 2022 edition of Batch Proof comes with a slightly lower ABV than in previous years. Uh, Chris Morris, their master distiller, says that uh, the fact that this batch has a higher percentage of barrels drawn from the first floors of their heat-cycled warehouses. I kind of messed up that sentence, but the indication there is that uh, that is why it is a slightly lower proof, um, just oh, because there's a lower so angel share. Yeah, I but but I also just don't... I mean, I've I've had a couple of those, and they've been good. I've liked them, but I haven't been like I need to buy a bottle of this. Yeah, you know, and and it's not even like a it's not a price thing. It's just it's just barrel proof Woodford Reserve. Yeah, you know, I, I just I don't have that much no. of an interest in it, uh, but. <clears throat> I mean, plenty of people do, and this is gonna this is gonna sell. This is gonna completely sell out. There's no way oh, it's yeah. not going to. Um, <laughs> that's just how it goes, man. That's yeah. just how it goes. Um, Woodford is just one of those most recognizable brands, and I cannot fault them for being trans not necessarily transparent, but almost like obvious about the way that they appeal to people yeah so it's it's fine um i just don't care i just yeah. I, like i genuinely just no, don't care it's and never it's not anything that i'm like worried about getting or anything no like that. um i think i've had double double oaked once and i thought it was fine so it's whatever uh let's talk about so something i very much do care about Something that we recently said, there's no way that this is ever going to happen again. But sure enough, as soon as we said that, it happened again. What has happened? We have a seven-year-old Booker's oh. back on the market. This Straight is called, up seven? It is seven years, one month, seven days. Damn, they went for it. They didn't stop at 6-11. Yeah, right. Or seven seven years, one day. <laughs> yeah. uh, ABV six two point four, so one twenty four point eight proof. Uh, this is further confirmation that it is uh, a higher price than it has been in the past at ninety dollars, uh, and it is out currently. Um, <laughs> you're eating ice cream. I looked away for two seconds, and you're eating more of the ice cream. <laughs> it was calling me. I just wasn't ready for it. Here, okay, let's 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 talk about this logistically for a second. Okay. And I hate that this is where we are with Booker's right now, but ninety dollars is a lot of money. We're not on good terms with Booker's right now. We're not, but I would be willing to give the seven-year-old bourbon a shot. You know, split it. That's exactly what I was about to say. I what do you think? Do that. Mm-hmm. I'll even let you keep the bottle. I don't care. <laughs> After it's empty. Yeah. yeah. A trophy. <laughs> yeah. This is the last bookers I bought. Mm -hmm. No, I'm down with that. I'm down to split it. Let's do it. Because I just don't, I don't want to spend $90 on uh I'd like to put it through the ringer, too. Oh, no. We will, we will tear it apart. We will absolutely tear Compare it apart. Compare it to other stuff. Mm-hmm. That's similar. 
Well, I mean, we, let's just go ahead and compare it to pff, let's compare it to other bookers. Yeah. Why don't we? Um, speaking of which, do you have any other bookers on hand? <laughs> Country ham. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. I I, I've only have, bought like three in like the past like five years. I feel like I have no bookers on hand. I because everything that I, everything that I've had, I just I've loved so much that I wanted to finish. You know, I finished the biscuits one pretty fast. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest, but I just finished it because it was just high proof, and I was going through it. Yeah. I milked Kentucky Chew for a while, and I just had to eventually finish it. I think I did that finish that one before I was even on the podcast, and now the last one I have that I really enjoyed was Country Ham. Eric, I forgot about something. Slapping a leg. What's going on? We forgot to talk about what we've been drinking recently. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the news. We'll go back to it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, we'll get we'll get back to it. Um, but, yeah, I definitely want to put it through. And, and maybe we can source some samples of Booker's, you know. I know that Chad and Sarah have, like, every release over the past. <laughs> I know we have, like, <laughs> like six years. several friends on our group chat, too. That yeah, we'll be, we'll be fine with that. Um, we mentioned this recently, I believe, but Discovery Series 8 from Bardstown Bourbon Company. Uh, blended whiskey from Kentucky, Indiana, on, and Ontario, Canada. Excuse me. Uh, the lowest age is six years old. It looks like it's going to be 114.1 proof. It's going to be $140. Ugh. Uh, 72,000 bottles. Man, um, I I, it's just pricing, man. It's just, it, I can't justify buying that. No, nah, I can't either. Um, I, I mean, I, I would love to get a sample of it just to see what it's about. Um, and we'll, we'll have to get on the horn with, uh, with Bardstown Bourbon Company again. But it's also been a while since we've gotten samples from them. So. Yeah, the last ones you got were like, what, Discovery, like, five or something like that no like well, those, i mean little... i bought those oh you bought those yeah i bought those oh, at the gift okay. shop but the the last like sample samples that we got were like discovery two and fusion two yeah. maybe maybe gotcha yeah so it's been a while uh we also have a new batch of barrel bourbon it's batch 33 from indiana kentucky and tennessee the lowest age is five years old uh 116.6 proof Oh, my. And $90 a bottle. Uh, it's consisting of five, six, seven, and nine year old bourbons. It consists of high rye and high corn barrels from Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana. Uh, excited about it as always. Always want to try it. I will never not be excited about a new release of barrel. Uh, a Garrison Brothers finished bourbon. It's called Garrison Brothers Guadalupe out of Texas. 2022 edition. Uh, six years old, 107 proof, $150 a bottle, uh, 5,902 bottles. Damn. Yeah. How much money? How much? Uh, 150. 150? Yeah, for a six year old. It's a lot. Uh, straight Damn. bourbon was also finished in tawny port casks, just like the first edition from last year, I suppose. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay without it, but. Unless somebody tries it and is like, you have to get this. Um, uh, it's a it's a pretty easy pass for me. Yeah. So, I'll tell you something that's not an easy pass for me, though, is the Yellowstone Limited Edition. The 2022 release. Ooh, One, 101 yeah. proof, uh, as oh, it typically yeah. is. $100 a bottle. Uh, and 30,000 bottles. The 2022 release of Yellowstone Limited Edition blends seven-year-old bourbon finished in Marsala Superior casks with bourbons aged 15 and 16 years. Holy Damn. moly. Uh, Marsala Superior is a dry, sweet, fortified wine from Sicily that must be aged for at least two years. Holy friggin' moly. Um, we have got to get a bottle of this. We might have to get two. <laughs> well, I think we're in By a good the... location to get one. Well... That's a good point. We'll see. We'll have to talk about it. Mountain Boots. Um, the, oh, shoot. We didn't even talk about this with news. This is something we should have definitely talked about with, like, actual news. But I guess we're just going to talk about the release of it. The Hidden Barn. Small oh, batch number yeah. one. 
Uh, 106 proof, $75 a bottle. So, of course, this is Jackie Zykan's uh, first release since leaving Old Forster, like, you know, 15 seconds ago, yeah. um, practically. Uh, limited to 1,400 bottles. It's produced by the... I sold some the... in the gift shop the other day. Yeah, they were selling them in the gift shop, yeah. Yeah. Um, produced by the Neely Family Distillery. Uh, I know that this is definitely sold out, but I still want to try it, man. I don't know, I, I, but I think it's hitting distro still. Is it? I think they just put a small amount in the gift shop. I think it's oh, okay. supposed to hit stores at least around Kentucky. I hope so. I mean, th- that's definitely a pickup for me. <clears throat> yeah, at the very sure. least. Um, seventy percent corn, twenty percent rye, and ten percent malted barley. Yeah. Nice. I can get on board with that. I can get behind that. Sure. Uh, another Texas bourbon, Milliman Green Distillery, uh, batch three of their straight bourbon, non-age stated. Uh, I cannot really do the math on that, but it's about 114 proof, I think. Uh, it's 56.94 ABV. 120 $120, sorry. Uh, available in Texas only, 870 bottles. Uh, 70% Texas grown corn, 22% malted rye, and 8% malted barley. Uh, Blue Run Golden Rye, batch 2, straight rye, non-age stated. Uh, looks to be 95 proof. 100 bucks a bottle, limited availability. Uh, it's a combination of 102 barrels selected by Jim Rutledge. So we'll uh, try that. We're going to have to try that. Uh, Forgate, Indiana Foundation MB. I don't know what the MB stands for. Maybe I'll find it out if I read a little bit more. Uh, 14 year old Indiana straight bourbon Master? whiskey. Never. <laughs> Um, a pretty hefty proofage here. You ready for this? Give it to me. 144.3. Oh, give me that asthmat. $450. <laughs> Shit. Never mind. Okay. Don't, don't, oh. give that. don't give me that. Don't give me that. I don't oh, want none of that. I'm okay. Uh, wow. It says this extra aged ultra high proof whiskey will be available exclusively in Louisville at one location yet to be disclosed at press time. Unlike the other four whiskeys, this one comes from just three barrels. The angel share was so high that the yield was just 129 bottles, making it a micro batch. Damn. So, there you go. Micro batch for a big wallet. Yes. Fourgate Bourbon Down Under, batch 24. Uh, six and a half years old. One sixteen point six proof, $200 a bottle, 2,178 bottles. High rye straight bourbon with a mash bill of 60% corn, 36% rye, and 4% malted barley. This whiskey was finished in a in Apera, uh, Opera, Apera, Sherry Casks from Australia. I was going to say it has to do something with Australia if it's called Down Under. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fourgate Barossa Creek, batch 23. Golly. I didn't realize that they had this many batches of whiskey out. I have to get samples from them or something. I don't know. Uh, finished whiskey with multiple origins, Kentucky and Indiana, they're listing. Six years old, 121.3 proof, $200 a bottle, uh, 1,280 bottles. Uh, this whiskey was also finished in Australian tawny port casks. Okay. <clears throat> Available in Kentucky, Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, uh, Texas, and Louisiana, as well as online. Forgate Indiana Foundation. Batch 22, straight bourbon from Indiana, 10 years old, 108.8 proof. Yes, 108.8. Uh, $200, 1,130 bottles. Bourbon was bottled at barrel proof and is available in Kentucky, Indiana, Louisiana, and Illinois, as well as online. And last but not least, as far as releases go, the... F- <laughs> I saved this one for last on purpose. <laughs> what are you doing? Maybe we can find it for, I don't know, next month. Uh, it's the Fourgate Port Perry Perry. <laughs> uh, batch Perry 21. Perry. Uh, finished rye. It's an Indiana straight rye, eight years old. Uh, 112.2 proof, $200 a bottle. 2,148 bottles. Uh, Perry finished Perry. In, uh, Perry Perry. 
finished in Australian tawny port casks available in Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Texas, Louisiana, and Illinois, as well as bourboneoutfitter.com, sealbox.com, and caskers.com. I got a good deal on some Australian barrels. I have a I'd feeling. say so. I'd say so. Uh, before we get to the TTB labels, do you want to talk about what we've been drinking recently since I'm an idiot and forgot to bring it up earlier? <laughs> I didn't think about it either. I was too busy my face and ice cream. Yeah. How much of that ice cream were you eating while I wasn't looking? <gasps> you killed it. <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> oh, You're my God. S- You're not going to sleep tonight. Oh, that's a lot of calories. Yeah, well, it's also it's also going to be a long night on the toilet for you, I think. Probably. Yeah. Oh, Probably. So what have you been drinking recently? What Eric? have I been drinking? Um, <clears throat> had another uh, Starlight pick from Bourbon Fines and Beerman's Bourbon. This time, this one was finished in rum barrels. Mm. It was really good. A really beachy poolside drink, and I paired it up with some Welch's gummies. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was really good. Um, I had uh, a Knob Creek pick from my friends over at Dad's Drinking Bourbon in the Wolf Pack, which I'm going to get from you, you tomorrow. You have a bottle sitting here for you. Um, well, I'm trying to think. I've worked a lot lately while you were on vacation. Um, that's really the two the two new things. I think other than that, I've just had some benchmark top floor and. Yeah. Some Weller or something like that. But yeah, those two bottles. That If you're in the Dad's Drink of Bourbon group um, and you didn't get one of them Knob Creeks, you missed out. And I got banned on Facebook for talking about it. So I actually took uh, some Benchmark Full Proof and Benchmark Top Floor on, uh, on this trip with us, too. So uh, Benchmark Top Floor was not as big of a hit as I was hoping for it to be. I brought home like... Uh, I don't know, like f- over three quarters of a bottle. <laughs> it's not a vacation bottle, I don't think. But it's lower proof. I know that's what I'm saying. That's why it's not a vacation bottle. But it, you're, I, you're trying to get something that hits hard on vacation. But I was trying to bring something for other people who want to drink bourbon but may not like the higher proof stuff. Oh, I see. I thought he was talking about for yourself. <laughs> no, I like to bring a little variety. I, I mean, I don't, a, I don't go on vacations with anybody, but my family, so I'm the only one drinking it. So. Well, see, there were other people who would be drinking bourbon. Gotcha. Along, so, gotcha. Um, brought some of that. Brought some 101. Had to buy a bottle of 101 halfway through the week, though. So, that's how that went. Uh, a <laughs> little Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof 375, just to kind of have some variety throughout the week. Uh trying to think i uh, the i had a have you ever heard of um jaiai j-i-a j-a-i-a-l-a-i it's a brewing company a beer company not, out of florida not, no um they have a i know you're not much of an ipa guy but they have a hazy ipa that is absolutely phenomenal um i know that some folks who listen who are beer people probably have heard of it before but i think they actually might distribute up here in kentucky as well um it's a little bit nuttier as far as hazy ipas go yeah. like it not not nearly what um what a lot of uh, citrusy beers turn out to be but i also and i was gonna tell this up at the top of the episode but i'm gonna have to rush through it now i suppose uh because i don't feel like i have the amount of time or freedom that i normally would to tell this but uh we were at disney Last, uh, yes. not not this, uh, as of recording, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. Uh, so that would have been Friday, July f- uh, 15th, I don't know. no, 16th. No, 15th. Oh. Yeah. 15th was when you got there. 16th was when you went to Florida. Right. Or when we went to the beach, I guess. Oh. Well, I was we trying were, to think because <laughs> we, we left Lucy, on the fort. Lucy we, was trying to make reservations for April and and you. All. Yeah, d- just yeah. <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole different something. story. That's a whole <laughs> different story. Um, so we took Eden to the Magic Kingdom for her her first time ever. Um, I've got a little thing I'm working on from it. So just a little, 
I uh, quick quick memory dump yeah. from that trip uh, that I'll hopefully have up uh, by the time this episode comes out. Um, it'll be on TikTok and Instagram and all that good stuff. But uh, I very actively was like, I need to record some stuff for this. I uh, didn't drink a whole lot, but I did have a little bit of <laughs> the Knob Creek Cast Strength 12 year uh, on the bus on the way to the That's Magic how Kingdom. That's we do it. The bus um, pour. And it was so hot at Magic Kingdom that day. I had... Re- I And I, I initially was like, I'll pour a little flask of something and I'll put it in the bag and I'll have it throughout the day. But I didn't wind up doing that and even if i had it would have been way too hot to be doing (laughs) that throughout the day it was miserably hot uh at magic kingdom that day um took her on all of the the slow rides that uh that we could fit in throughout the day uh very first ride was uh uh, winnie the pooh oh dude that Uh, ride gets crazy i'm tripping in that ride half the time oh absolutely Absolutely, um, I love that ride. I genuinely do. I want to it's, take an it's edible fun. And ride that ride. It's it's goofy and fun. It reminds me of my childhood, and it just it's it's when it, it's Disney's it's a Winnie must. the Pooh. You gotta ride yeah, absolutely. That ride. Um, <clears throat> Small World, Peter Pan's. Um, gosh, I can't. Dumbo. Oh, we, uh, Dumbo we did as well, uh, which she freaked out over because she had uh, her little bitty shorts on and the plastic on the Dumbo elephant uh, was really, really hot <laughs> from the sun beating down on her. Um, so I felt really bad about that, but she, she eased up after we started flying and she loved it. She loved the flying through the, the air and everything. Um we did the Little Mermaid ride, which she could not have cared less about at you all. Got to kiss the girl. We and and the two that though that I will say, and there's <laughs> the two that I was the most worried about, and we were like, we're just gonna do them, see what happens. Uh, were Haunted Mansion and Ooh, yeah. and Pirates. Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. She did great on Pirates. She was perfect. I did not care at all. And there was only one moment on Haunted Mansion where the poor little thing got a little scared. But she was <laughs> fine afterwards. And it was before the ride even started. It's when they bring you into that room. Oh, and the room moves? No, it wasn't even that. It was when the lights go out and there's the screaming and you look up and there's a woman <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. Yes. And there's the, there's the screaming and everything. And Lucy goes, Lucy was like, she leaned at me and went, <laughs> like this, like, this, this, what this is teeny, this? teeny tiny little bit of fear um but she was great on it she was great on it um we only got well not only we got stuck on just about every ride that we went on oh yeah just the stoppage you're like right in the middle yeah. of it I mean, we we got stuck on another ghoul has messed up the track. Yeah, Just exactly. It, on Winnie the Pooh, it's Tigger telling you that yeah. you know it's good, whatever. Um, but I'll say that I think maybe the two funniest instances with her were on, not on, but in uh, the Tiki Room. Which I genuinely love, I even love though the tiki room. it's, su- it's it. such a great relaxer. It's <laughs> You're gonna do the trap version yeah. remix of the tiki room. <laughs> um, she loved it. She loved every second of the tiki room, to the point where as we were leaving, and she was up and dancing, and like every time a song ends, she was like clapping for it and everything too. It was perfect. Um, as we were leaving. Lucy was holding her, and Lucy goes, "All right, say say bye bye birds." And Eden goes, "Bye bye birds, love you." <laughs> oh, so cute! So we and we were initially going to get her like a you know my first Chris, my first Disney trip ornament, and instead we got her a tiki room ornament um, <laughs> awesome. because it was her favorite ride there. Yeah, um, I would say her la- least favorite attraction though was the country bears um which is 
hands down, the horniest thing oh, at Disney World. I told you, I horny forgot, bears. I forgot that it was that horny. Um, I didn't realize it was that horny until I went like the last time. I but, mean, it's just <laughs> horny until, bears. Yeah, until the the trio of uh, tiny bears, tiny lady bears, sing uh, all the guys that turn me on, turn me down. Yeah, um, which I was just like Lucy and I were like. Is this really happening right now? <laughs> that one bear comes from the ceiling. He's like, I'll be right up, honey. Yes, exactly, exactly. Oh, my gosh. It was so weird. Eden hated it. She started, like, crying during it. And we, we've we been teaching her sign language since she's been little um, just to, you know, give her something else to communicate with. And one of the things we taught her is all done, right? It's yeah. just a very simple all done. <laughs> but she says all done when she does it too. And so we're about three quarters of the way through a nine minute show, right? In the country bear hall. And she looks up at us and goes, All done. <laughs> she all done. All done. And I kind of feel the same way about that. Yeah. Um but <laughs> between so I was sitting there going. I really want to do our adult trip with you and April. Not like me and me and Lucy and you all. Yeah. Yeah. And we get drunk and we go to stuff like the 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 Laugh Hall, the Monsters Inc. Laugh Hall oh, and yeah. Country Bears. And we're just hammered for it. And we think it and we're just it's the funniest thing in the world to us. I think that would be so much just getting overly competitive would, at the would, on the Buzz Lightyear ride. I'd get pissed on the laugh floor though if they didn't put me on the screen. <laughs> I still get mad at that. <laughs> I'm like, put me on the screen. Sully. But come on. Mike, come on. Put me up there. So we we think that Eden was kind of sick the day that we were there. Because she wasn't really acting herself. Um she was a little bit just more reserved. And everything. And so she she just we were a little bit bummed about that. But we got to the fireworks and she had taken about an hour nap. And she she wakes up and we're like, Oh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna pick her up, we're gonna hold her, and we're gonna watch the fireworks with her and everything. It's gonna be a great little family moment. And Lucy picks her up and she immediately wants to get back in her stroller. <laughs> <laughs> so she is just sitting there watching the fireworks while Lucy and I are like, this is nice. This is just, you know, everything that we were hoping it would be. Um, but I, like she actually got into the fireworks and everything. She was like clapping for it. And, and they're amazing, too, especially um, when they sync up with the, the lots and stuff. The fireworks are great. I I was not there. There's something about this newer show. And I think it's because they're they're relying too much on the newer movies that it's not as like emotional yeah as some of the older shows have been but it's still really good still fantastic stuff tinkerbell still flies from the top of the castle to you know god knows where <laughs> <laughs> she just she just disappears um oh i forgot uh we we went to uh we went to dinner at um do you remember the name of it i'm sorry i, I i'm really bad with names. oh um the uh the one by the tiki room yes the, uh uh skippers yes skippers yeah it's uh it's jungle cruise based yeah um and i i got a a red ale uh spiced red ale that was uh and you you said you'd had it before mm-hmm. too yeah. um it was brewed specifically for disney world yeah. it was fantastic it was so daggum especially good. after you've been out in the heat all the time oh yeah absolutely um, and we split the, uh, it was the, they called it the taste like chicken because it is, yeah, <laughs> it's just fried chicken. Um, it was really, really good. Uh, but so the two best moments I would say though, came after the fireworks and Eric knows this. And I think anybody who's been to Disney world and like buys into it and everything, at Disney After Dark just hits different. Oh yeah, it's just a completely different experience than when you're you're there during the day. And we 
we were like, okay, we're going to take her on the carousel and then we're going to go back to the room and sleep. Cause you know, by the time the fireworks are over, it's about nine thirty, nine forty five. Yep. You're just worn out from the day. I had the biggest blisters I've ever had on my feet just from that one day. Um, by the time we got back to the room, but we didn't, we literally did not get back to the room until about 1230 in the morning. Um, and that's because we, we left the fireworks. We're like, what else can we do? So Eden really likes being spun around. She likes spinning. She thinks it's so much fun. And initially we thought, well, she's not going to like the, the teacups. She'll probably throw up. It was the end of the day too. So we're like, we'll just give it a shot. We may as well. She loved the teacups, dude. Oh, yeah, because you can control the how fast and biggest, how slow you go. Biggest smile on the teacups. Um, then we went to we went to Small World again. Just because it was a, you know, pretty chill one. I had a mild panic attack thinking about what it would be like to be in uh, Small World when all the power oh, was we off. Always talk, we talk about what happens. We... Me and yeah. the kids are always like, look up in the ceiling. You know, there's some watching. Me. Hate the ceiling. I hate looking at the ceiling. It takes there's, me completely out. There's it makes, some real life small world people up there watching you the whole absolutely. time. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But like when I when the power are. when they turn the power off for the night, like thinking about all of those little animatronic dolls just they not come to moving. life and start hanging out. Yeah, it just it, it like freaked me out in the middle yeah. of it for no reason. Um, but so we we finished out the the night with the the carousel and she loved it man she thought it was so much fun do you have a light just die yeah terrific um <laughs> it's spooky uh, um it, it just it was it was just a great way to to end it it was just you know her in pure bliss and and everything and we're we're leaving, and by this point, the the second fireworks show has started, and we're trying to get, we're trying to get out, and the show the show is finishing up, and you hear in the background like, you know, this is the place where you dream of, and you know, magic happens and everything, and I kid you not, as that was being said. They were escorting, you know, the, the front like train station, Yes. of course, at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. They were escorting Mickey and Minnie down from the, the train station and in the background. It's like, this is where dreams come true. And this is where happy, you know, all that. And we're pushing our toddler out. It's her first time at Disney World. And we look over just as the show is ending and just as we're about to leave the park and there's a Mickey Mouse, he turns around and waves at everybody. And you just started crying. I did. I was like, that's the I perfect, I was like, up. that's the perfect way for us to end a day at Disney world and the perfect yep. way for us to end our kids first day our f her first time here. It was just, it was just awesome. It was so good. And you know, it, Somebody, I, th I think Joe Brazo was saying, you know, she's not going to remember any of this. And it's like, you know, it, it's it's not necessarily about that. For one, you know, it's about us being able to have those memories with her. And two, I mean, it could be that she does wind up remembering this. This could be her very first memory. True. So I, it, it's, it's, it was worth the $300 gamble or whatever. To yeah. And like I, <laughs> I, like I told you, I, I said on that... Um, my kids don't remember their first time, but they love mm -hmm. looking at the pictures and being like, oh, I, I remember looking at the picture and I was here and now I'm here. And now they're starting to remember everything. So now yeah. they want to reenact pictures or they want to go stand where they were before and stuff. And yeah. it's just fun. It is. It, it's it's special, too. And I mean, it. it I understand that it's it's literally just a big corporate conglomerate and, and yeah. whatever, but it... it it's special. It really is special. And I mean, it, it exists for a reason and continues to be, you know, what it is for a reason Yeah, as well. So what were we talking about? We're we doing a bourbon podcast here. Uh, we're from Disney <laughs> podcast. <or> what? <laughs> 
What if we just became Disney influencers? Shit. I'll be down. In Kentucky. Kentucky In Disney Kentucky. influencers. Yeah. That's really yeah. funny. Um, should we? I guess we got to talk about these uh, TCB labels now. <laughs> yeah, you can run through them. Uh, Barrel Vantage, a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in Mizanara, French, and toasted American oak, 114.44 proof. Uh, a Balcones, Balcones, uh, sorry, ZZ Top, Trace Ombres, Cast Strength, uh, Texas Whiskey. Come again? Uh, <laughs> yeah, ZZ Top's got a whiskey coming out. Wow. Uh, 120 proof, as far as we can tell right now. Uh, chicken cock, private cask, aged seven years, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, 100 proof. Um, double cask finished, old scout. Uh, chicken cock, Chanticleer, cognac barrel finish, Kentucky bourbon. Um, high malt, new loose, straight bourbon whiskey. Uh, Blue Note, a collaboration from the Argentine Andes. Straight bourbon whiskey finished in uh, French oak Las Notas barrels. Uh, 120 proof. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> uh, single cask nation has a double cask American single malt whiskey coming out. 112.2 proof. Uh, I think that's about it. That's all that really matters. Nothing really matters. Nothing really matters. Anyone can see. Nothing really matters. To Nothing really matters mm. to me. me. Anyway, should we do a review? <laughs> Let's do a review. Woo! <laughs> this has been some kind of episode. Um, so, Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond Bourbon has finally made its way back to Kentucky. Hallelujah. Uh, seven-year-old, as opposed to the six-year-old bourbon uh, that was available for, <laughs> like, 12 bucks a bottle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it now is $40 a bottle, unfortunately. Oh, my goodness. I'm just dropping stuff all over the place. Um, different bottle. They put a cork in it. Very different bottle. Uh, very different packaging as well. Um, has not been in Kentucky now for almost two years, practically. I'm happy it's here now. Yeah, I'm happy to see it. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> two, thing, two things I want to say before we get into the review. One... Um, I feel like we might have done this review before, but I cannot find any evidence of that anywhere. So if we are doing this for a second time, I apologize. Uh, but also this was sent to us by Heaven Hill, uh, completely free of charge. Well, uh, this would have been the first time you reviewed it when it's actually available in Kentucky. Well, in Kentucky, yeah. So but, if you did it before, it was it was non Kentucky then. So, but but I mean, I still hopefully it's consistent enough to where you know back it's then I was <laughs> maybe. Uh, but of course, one hundred proof, seven years old, uh, as dictated by law. Um, mm. I guess this is uh, this is Denny Potter juice from before he made the move over to uh, to Maker's Mark. I guess so. It's been seven years ago. So. Stop falling. It smells like Heaven Hill. It smells like you're at Heaven Hill. Like I feel like they just they put this in the vents in the gift shop and it just that's what sprays in the gift shop when you go to Heaven Hill. <laughs> it's like Disney with the artificial yeah. uh, when you're smells walking down and sounds Main pumped Street, in. Yeah. yeah. It smells really good. Oh, it really does smell like Heaven Hill though. Just that that overall like Yeah. Butterscotch, baking spice, snickerdoodle, carameliness that they it's are always, so well known it's for. It's always that bakery smell, man. Heaven Hill, a good Heaven Hill bottle like Elijah Craig or anything like that is always going to have that bakery to me. Now, you bring up a, an interesting point with uh, with Elijah Craig because, I mean, that is 
essentially like an eight to 12 year old bourbon now for about $30 a bottle. Whereas this at, you know, seven years old is 40. True. I, uh, it, 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 man, I feel like I've had this conversation before. I feel like I'm, I'm doing, you know, like uh, in sitcoms or, you know, old TV shows, they do like a redo episode. Yeah. <laughs> like they take the same plot and they would just, you know, recast some yeah. of the characters and like improve the script and everything. And, um, I feel like I'm doing that right now. Um, but I, I don't, it is, at least as far as the nose goes, I don't hate this. No. And I think when I say a lot, Craig, like, I feel like it noses more like a, like an ECBP as opposed to the yeah. 94 proof. I don't, and it's, I know it's only six more proof points, but still like there's even like this French toast. It's really, it's just this dark, it's just this dark nose. That's just all dark. It's all brown and tan and like just anything you think of that's like a bakery like pantry of like spices and stuff that's what i see when i smell this it's all it's this brown it's, sugar looking stuff it is definitely there on the palate oh yeah it's um oh that's brown sugar it's almost like a have you ever had a like a brown butter cookie hell yeah of course yeah it's like this brown yeah, butter yeah, yeah. on like almost like this cinnamon sugar cookie that's just a solid a solid i mean it it doesn't I knock just, me <laughs> knock me back or anything it's just comfortable if that makes sense well yeah and i think that that is almost where i start to get a little bit frustrated with the price on this <laughs> yeah um, uh, I, I won't and, i won't disagree and not that not that we didn't just review an eight-year-old bottom and bond product and say at eighty dollars eighty five dollars a bottle that was appropriately priced um i i think it just comes from the fact that we are so familiar essentially with this brand that we know it so intimately with the the six-year-old age statement because i mean in, in kentucky we were spoiled with the fact that we were able to pick up a six-year-old bottle of bond from heaven hill for 11 or 12 dollars a bottle for a long time and then when yeah. it got taken away from us we were like a kid throwing a tantrum yeah <laughs> and now and, i mean this has finally come back to kentucky but it, it it almost feels like and i will say this too the work that they've done with the packaging the the way that the bottle looks itself it does look more premium it does look like it belongs uh in in the price category that it is in i would definitely be more upset if this were in the 70 dollar range um oh, yeah just because I do have, you know, familiarity and history with the, the product that this came from. Um, but I think that, you know, th this is still a steal at, at $40 a bottle. I, that, that is still something that people should consider to be um, reasonable. And we were because, just, we just were spoiled with the other stuff so we're just kind of being salty about it no we definitely are and I mean, that's that's why i'm trying to like step yeah. away from that and and say that you know um I, it, he heaven hill unfortunately i think is probably the most inconsistent brand as far as it goes to as far as it goes considering um pricing schemes yes yeah. right because and i mean as as far as we know based on recent news like the old fitz bottle and bond is going away like the decanter version yeah. of it is going away um but even if we're just basing the pricing scheme off of that ten dollars per year um this falls well below that that margin well below it um so i don't know and i then you've got I, all their other screw top bottled and bond things that are at least yeah i mean like would, would you want to pay 40 dollars for a bottle of jw dant no that's what i'm saying exactly like, that's like exactly. 12 bucks like so yeah. it's like yeah it's all over the place yeah so i i think that um at, at least considering you know maybe they're doing like i don't know like two bucks a year, not even two bucks like three bucks a year for you know or three three dollars for every year that it's aged um 
uh, I guess this kind of falls below that too. But I, I mean, it's it's not it's not horrible. I, no. It's not it's not necessarily um, unheard of. But I mean, if, here I am trying to justify like a a three hundred percent price increase from <laughs> what it was at six uh, six years, you know, to to what it is now. Um, Oh, I mean, pound for pound, this is a great bourbon. This is solid. This is really, like, really good. Yeah. Um, should I got two comparisons I want to do with this? It depends on how accessible they are to the both of us. I can pretty easily make this happen, but it depends on what you. What are you thinking? I want to compare it not only to the six-year version of this from ages past but also to the eight year wilderness trail bottle and bond um i can get the wilderness trail i don't even have a six year anymore I that's okay the, let's just let's I, just only kill that the, one <laughs> a long time let's, ago let's just do the wilderness trail then eight years oh. wilderness trail same proof same proof. proof just one year older Ah, uh, man. Does uh, If you smell the Wilderness Trail first and then smell the Heaven Hill, doesn't it make that Heaven Hill smell like it's about three years old? Like, I get like this young nose on the Heaven Hill after I smell the eight year. Young, yeah, I would say younger. Yeah. I would say younger, but the, the, the problem for me is that this is not a this is not an apples to apples comparison just because they're of completely course, like, different no they yeah. absolutely are um the 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 wilderness trail is so much like it it's so much woodier like it's just it it's just got so much more oak to it it's sweet than and the it's heaven oak hill does and yeah That year just seems like it has more layers on it, like we said before. And the Heaven Hill seems like it's more just, it's just solid. It's just like, I'm bourbon, drink me, I'm good to go. <laughs> the eight year though, man, it's just... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not even fair. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. Here's the thing, though. I think that the seven year is for particular people, and I think that the eight year is for particular people. And I know that in our review of the eight year, I said that this is kind of a bourbon for everybody. I do still genuinely believe that. But if you don't like sweeter bourbons, the Heaven Hill is not for you. That you know, is that is going to be desserts, the deciding yeah. factor, I think for for a lot of people. Um, it does. It definitely like kind of helps me put into perspective what <laughs> what I think about the the Heaven Hill versus this this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> eight year old Wilderness Trail bourbon. Oh. Um, I was thinking about this earlier. Do you think that Wilderness Trail is currently like our joint favorite distillery? I think so. I think it's I been think like so that too. for a long time. I think yeah. we—it's always kind of been that way. We, there's plenty of things we both like, Knob Creeks and well, yeah, Bell but Proust it's just and, like the the eight year think, kind of solidified that. I, but I think across the whole board, I think yeah. as as a distillery that that's we're we're both. It's definitely the one where marks. We're, we're mutually the most excited about. Yeah, I think. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the the video version here. Um, but Lucy came out here recently while I was I think I was working or filming something, or, and she hadn't seen yet your headshot <laughs> that is sitting here. And she goes, "Oh, I love the fact that you've just got." a picture of Eric sitting next to you <laughs> out here in the studio. 
Oh. So I'm going to insert that into the video version. <laughs> so if you want to see... <laughs> it's me. If you want to see what's sitting next to me while I do all of my work out here. Um, it's me. <laughs> it's really, really funny. Do you want to review this one now? Threes across the board. Threes. Okay. Interesting. I put it threes across. I've been thinking about I... it. Threes across the board. I'm not think. I'm trying not to think about how they spoiled us with the price before. I'm looking at it as seven years, hundred proof bottle in a bond. I'm giving it a three. Could be a little better. Could be worse. Either way, <coughs> I'm just. I'm. I think threes across the board to me. It went down the wrong way. Perry turned purple for a second. Oh my gosh. Thank God it wasn't barrel. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's that thing where bourbon goes down the wrong hatch. <laughs> and it just almost kills you. Yeah, that's that's what I felt just now. Anyway, you got threes across the board. Threes across the board. I think this is just solid across the board. Palette, nose, finish, price, me trying not to think about the, you know, the six year was twelve, thirteen dollars. Looking at it, seven year bourbon, hundred proof bottle and bond at forty bucks. Solid. I'm gonna say threes across the board. I think this is the first time that we are seeing that we definitely painted ourselves into a corner with the uh, Wilderness Trail eight year <laughs> bottle and bond. <clears throat> because now I have to justify why it's okay to pay um, essentially half. What we did for the the Wilderness Trail on a bourbon that is one year younger. <laughs> I think the palate. I think the palate. I mean, now that we've tasted them, I mean. No, that's fair. That's totally fair. Um, it tastes, the eight year tastes like a $100, $150 bottle. I yeah. Mean. I And I think that this one actually does, I, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more meticulous. I think we're probably going to wind up with the same score, though. Um <laughs> I'm still dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, nose for me is a 2.5. Okay. Good, not great. 3.5 for the palate. I okay. really enjoy the palate. Uh, finish is a 2. Okay. Um, I think that puts me at a... 2.5 plus 3.5 plus... What did you say? 2? Two? 2. So an, so an 8 out of 20 right now. Right? Uh, 3.5 plus 2.5 plus 2. Yep, 8. Um, all that considered, $40 is still a lot of money, but I think that this is definitely worth the price of admission. Um, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 on the price. We uh, both, so up with we a both 12. wound up with a 12 out of 20. Um, I, I like this a lot. Um, I do too. But it definitely does read to me more like a daily drinker than it does yeah, yeah. A, a, a a premium bottle, which I think it's starting to fall into the category of. Um, so, and I think that's what it should be. Like that's what that's what the six year was to us. It was a easy to get daily, yeah. and it was good. But we felt it was a daily, and like you say now. They up, upped up the bottling and the price and the age, and it. They try to seem like it's being more premium, but to me, it's still. I think a twelve. Yeah. I think a twelve is a perfect daily drinker score because it's something you are always going to go to, yeah. but it's not your like special pour. Would Would you agree with me in saying that Heaven Hill is the king of the daily drinker? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. So with with that in mind. Um, how would you kind of qualify that? Like, what do you think it is that, that makes Heaven Hill, um, th that accessible to people? I think it's, I think it's that, what we were talking about earlier, I think it's the price. I mean, you can go in, at least around here, you can go in and get four different screw top bottled and bonds that are all solid for under 20 bucks. Or you can go get an Elijah Craig 94 proof for what, $23 or something like that. And it's good. And then, 
I mean, even the Logic Craig Barrel Proof is a little easier to get. It's not yeah. e- as easy anymore, but still, I've got plenty of those I can just pull out, and I don't feel like it's like it's a special pour, but it's it's not a special pour, I guess you would say. It's like, you know, finishing the night, I want some barrel proof. Yeah. I can grab some of Logic Craig Barrel Proof. I think it's from that $12 up to... Eighty dollar, like it's the most accessible daily. You've got a wide variety of dailies you could use. <coughs> Sorry, um, I, I <coughs> geez, Louise, I'm never going to get over this. Um, I do think that it's the the accessibility there for sure, and and not even just in you know the ability to to pick one up, but also in terms of. Uh, just how easy it is for for people to kind of get on board with this flavor profile or mm-hmm. with the the things that make it so so enjoyable to a Listen, lot of people. If you don't enjoy the smell and the taste of something that's baked or a bakery, then you you need to talk to Jesus because it's like <laughs> like. I don't know what to say if you if you it's go, a big I statement. Don't, I don't I don't like the smell of a bakery. I don't like yeah. I mean something's wrong. Talk to me. Oh, you can, that that hef, that uh, wilderness trail though, man. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, I've been sitting on this little time we talking. Um but yeah, I, I I think that this is something that you should consider picking up if you see it. It's yeah. definitely now much more accessible to Mm -hmm. to people um even even just within kentucky and uh you know our the first bottle that i got of it uh i had to get sourced out of uh california um from our buddy clifton from bourbon bites uh because that was the first person that i heard found it at retail and so i jumped on it but uh, we also got sent a sample of it back when it first came out, so I'd have to dig into my my collection and see where that is. Um, but that would be a fun little comparison yeah. sometime between that and this edition that we got, and the uh, I'm assuming like the first batched version that you know. Yeah, yeah, because this started the one in I... Kentucky, got sent to California, and then got <laughs> sent back to Kentucky. Because the one I got, I got at my local store when it before they announced that it was going to be Kentucky. So like it, it was just hitting Kentucky, and I, we didn't even yeah. know it. Mm-hmm. And then a couple, yep. you know, a little bit later, Perry got it like sent, a week so. later. Yeah. So this is Crazy. we both definitely had the same first Kentucky representing Heaven Hill Absolutely. bottle and bond here. So yeah. So if you see it, pick it up. I think so. Um, I I don't know if this is like a hard seek out for me. It, um, yeah, yeah but it's not if anything. It's, if it's around, grab one. Yeah, it's not anything I would get to be like, hey, look, impress my friends coming over. I got the, no, no. This is I'm putting it on the shelf, and you know I may grab this. So I could drink it, and mix it with Coke, or make a old fashioned out of it, or whatever. Ooh, I can't wait to make an old fashioned with this. Oh. Man, maybe a Manhattan too. Yeah. Hmm. I'm down. I love that maltiness of a of a Heaven Hill product. Anyway, shall we move on to tips and or bits? Yeah. Normally called tips and bits. Tips and bits. It's a segment where we recommend things to people, uh, not always bourbon related. Uh, we also had a a, a recommendation in uh our facebook group uh i have to find who exactly said it but uh it was recommending that we start doing a segment called uh high proof hot takes oh i'm down um who was it that said that let me find it proof hot takes let's go michael sullivan he said, in light of uh, Swan's recent posts, oh yeah, Swan I would like to request Swan that new found internet yeah. freedom. 
Um, he said, I would like to request that Tim Bip add high proof hot takes as a recurring segment. This is where Eric and Perry could offer strong opinions that are presumed to be controversial or at least arguable. Doesn't have to be on bourbon as Swan has shown. <laughs> So, I mean, do you want to do that before we, we go to Tips and Bits? Uh, what what would be the, like, we just pick our own hot take? Do we yeah. do, a, do yeah. a one together, or is it like... No, let's let's pick our own. Um, so it's just a hot take. Like just a hot that, take. Just any hot take. take is just... I've, I've got one that I've kind of been holding on to. It, it's, it's really... It's it's a complete like 180 from everything that we've been talking about, um, but it's 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 something that has been bugging me recently. I would say. Um. Okay. Let's see. Hot take. Um. Do you want me to go first? You can go first. All right. Fine. I'll go first. For this. Um. I don't think that this is the most controversial of opinions, um, but I think that it has become more prevalent with uh, popular child stars suddenly becoming adults. Uh, but I think that the over-sexualization of female child actors and the expectation of them becoming 18 uh, is absolutely disgusting. I think it's one of the grossest things that our uh, our society is doing right now, and uh, particularly with uh, Millie Bobby Brown from oh. Stranger Things. Uh, it was like everybody was just waiting, and and even with Billie Eilish, uh, everybody was just kind of waiting for them to turn eighteen so that they could see see more of their bodies, and then it it was like. Why are you doing this? Yeah, that's <laughs> like weird. stop, stop doing that. And <clears throat> Billie Eilish even said, you know, she she actively hid her body because she was underage. She didn't want people to think about it, uh, and she they she wanted people to focus more on on her music than than anything. So. Um, I think it's disgusting. It's really, really gross that I... Uh, Especially when you have a daughter of your own. Which exactly. That That is what I put it into feeling, perspective. Yeah, yeah it, it's that, that feeling of like when guys... Not just guys. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, it's only reserved to people who identify as male. Um, but just that, <clears throat> you know, anybody who, who goes... Oh, I can't wait for them to turn 18 or, you know, they're going to be so whatever when they become an adult. Like, it's just gross yeah. to me, man. It's just, it's just, ugh. it's, ugh. I hate it. I hate it so much. And I hate that it's like, there are two very high profile, uh, examples of it yeah, right now I, I, too. I agree. So, uh, that's my high proof hot take. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as you were saying that, I started thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to just put myself on blast right now. Um, because I recently decided to have a kind of a change of view on something. Mm. Um, if you follow me on Instagram and you see my stories, uh, I post, you know, short little workout videos and stuff. And I'm, I, I use the hashtag earn your bourbon earn your snacks, stuff like that. And I recently began to think that I, I'm not anybody it's, who uses it's not, that. It, it's not super healthy. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not giving anybody, I'm not saying it's bad to use a motivation, like earn your bourbon or earn your snacks or whatever by working out. My thing is not everybody has a chance to work out and not everybody has the time and it's me. I don't want to put off the I I realized that it made it seem like I what am I trying to say I wanted to motivate people to like feel like hey like hey let's get out and work out and stuff but yeah. at the same time I don't want people to look at that and be and feel like that I'm saying that in order to enjoy your bourbon and everything like that, you had to go work out. 
So yeah. today I actually posted uh, no hashtags or anything like that. I posted just enjoy your bourbon. There's you've done something within the week to enjoy what you've bought or earned or your yeah. day off or your shows. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to work out to quote earn your bourbon or enjoy it. You've you've worked hard. You've done the laundry. You've took care of your kids. You've done that, and you deserve that. And I really, I thought about this last night, and it almost brought me to tears because I thought that, because I had somebody send a message that said, I really like seeing your videos, but I feel bad sometimes because I can't do the same. And it it really made me feel like I was not doing the right thing. And I'm not saying you can't use a hashtag like that. I'm just saying me now, like, I just want people to enjoy their bourbon and their shows and their snacks when they get a chance. And, you know, I'm still going to keep working out because that's what I do. But I don't think anybody has to earn anything that they bought or, you know, they saved up for and all that. And if anybody saw that saw those posts and they ever thought like man like i feel bad because i don't earn my bourbon or something like that i wholeheartedly apologize for that um i would rather (laughs) i would rather post a workout and somebody say hey that looks like a cool workout i want to do it as opposed to almost like them feeling bad because they didn't quote earn their bourbon so that's my hot take and i'm blasting myself right now i think i think that's really important that even as as two guys we we talk about body positivity because yeah. I mean, it it's it it goes along with like mental health and everything that you know we not only support other people but we also support ourselves and the the decisions and everything that we've made and i mean like it, it, it it's a weird thing to say but like it at the crux of it like I decided to have a kid two years ago, you know, like I, I decided to make that, that life changing alteration. And so with, with that, I mean, it becomes like more difficult to do the things that I did before I had a child. And so it's, it's not as easy for, for me to get to the gym. And I mean, I, I like, I think about it literally every day where I go, I need to get to the gym. I need to work out. I need to, you know, eat better and do this and, and whatnot. But the, the fact of the matter is like, it is a very difficult part for a lot of us to, you know, be able to find time for it. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's really, it's really tough when, you know, because it's, it's different for everybody too right and i think that's Mm -hmm. what it gets to yeah is that you know not everybody has the same opportunities not everybody has the same uh time time availability or time uh even even restraints that um some might have um but just to be able to do that and you know i i am somebody who has struggled with that i mean and and a lot of it came from covid and Um, battling with even just a drinking habit, like how much am I drinking? You know, how much do I want to drink and, and everything. And, um, I mean that, that does not only have like an impact on your, your physical and mental health, but emotional as well. And it it does, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to like say, Hey, I, I hate you for doing this or anything, but I mean, like there, there isn't, there is even like a portion of it where I was like, ah, man, Eric's really showing me up. Like, <laughs> and see, that was never, that like, was I gotta, never, I gotta do better because he's, you know, I was honestly I can't be, looking, I can't be the fat guy on the podcast. No. And I was looking at it the wrong way. And like I said, like, I'm still going to work out and I'll still post stuff, but I'm not going to, I don't feel like I need to associate that with the reason that I had a snack cake or the reason that I had a pour yeah. of barrel proof bourbon or something like that. Like work out because you enjoy it and because that's what you decided to do. 
but also you know what if at the end of the day you have a dessert or you have a poor you did something during that day to deserve that and you earned it in some way yeah. possible and yeah. it i don't know that just that's something that well <laughs> that's a hot take for myself and it's kind of me just getting it out there because like i want everybody to be healthy and i i think that everybody needs to work out some way just to stay active but don't feel don't don't feel like you have to use that as a motivation to have a pour or to have a dessert and if you do want to use that as a motivation that's perfectly fine we all have our own motivations but me personally like I, I i don't think i'm ready i don't think i want to use that anymore as as a way to s try to motivate people i think yeah. i'm done with that so that's 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 my social media working out whatever hot take here we go barrel proof whatever there you go it's all that matters tips and bits <laughs> <laughs> Tips and bits. I have a lot of stuff I've watched, but we've it's getting late, so it I'm gonna getting, save a lot of stuff. Late. Yeah, I watched Nope. I would recommend go see it. I'd rather a bunch of people watch it, including Perry, before I start going into it. No, I I don't I don't I don't know anything about this movie, and yeah. I I, I don't want to say anything about it because I don't want to give anything away. You it's know what great. I really what I really hope it is, and and just based on like the trailers and everything, is that. It's short little vignettes of crazy things happening to to people, even if it's just like the the same couple. Because it's um, Daniel Kaluuya and um, oh my gosh, what is her name? Kiki Palmer. Yeah, I I, I can't remember. Yeah, her I think name, I think it is Kiki Palmer. Um, even if it is like the two of them just going through all these weird like experiences. And e like even if they're not like scared, they're just kind of moving on to the next thing, and they're just like, nope. And then like the next thing happens. Like yeah. it, I, I would, I would have really enjoyed if that's what. I won't say anything. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Um, but I, I would really, really, I'm so excited for yeah, for that. It's movie. definitely a watch. Um, we're in the middle of Shark Week right now, or we well, just it started just, it. It just but, started as of recording. Yeah. But I just watched the newest. Uh, episode of Shark Week Jackass. Oh, yeah. And I recently watched Jackass 4.5, which is on Netflix, which is kind of a documentary of them making Jackass forever, and it shows what they had <laughs> yeah. to do. They started filming, and then COVID hit, and they had to stop, and then they had to come back, and they had to like do regulations and all this stuff. And so I recommend Jackass 4.5 because it shows a lot more of some of the stunts they didn't put in there. And then I also recommend Shark Week's Jackass because last year, um, Poopsie, he did a stunt where he actually got, he almost lost his hand because a shark bit him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so this, this new episode actually shows more footage and it shows like the hole and it shows the bleeding. Like he, he almost lost his hand. And so this new episode is them trying to get poopsie over the fear of getting back in the water because he's a surfer and stuff why but Just but it helped be but he wants to get back in the water oh, he wants okay. to do this because he loves surfing that's and everything. different but they They're also like, hey have, you got to get back no in. no 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 like they do little things to try to overcome that fear again um and they also have like a uh, marine biologist who's there and he kind of talks about the actual like scientific stuff about the sharks uh, about the stunts they're doing but then there's also the just this you know they're puking and there's different jackass stuff going on but it's half it's half uh entertaining half educational so check out the the jackasses uh episode of shark week this year <sighs> okay <laughs> I'm Whiskey Mutant. Welcome to this My Bourbon Podcast. <laughs> I am still working my way through the uh, Cuphead DLC. Um, it is brutal. <laughs> it's real. It's it's real tough. Um, but my son, I, my son beat it the second day he had it. 
Yeah, well, Eli can <laughs> shut up, okay? <laughs> He's a friggin' 11 year old, and I'm a 28 year old man who doesn't. You know, he stopped playing video games for about 10 years and then was like, hey, you know what? I should start playing video games again. And it's been a journey for me. <laughs> um, it's it's so much fun, though. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. I Some of the best level design that I they have done with this game and probably that I have ever really experienced with, uh, with video gaming before. Um, so it, if you don't know what Cuphead is, go check it out first and foremost. I know that I'm probably supposed to be doing a little bit more specificity here, but I'm so, I'm so tired. Um, two, two more things, two more, maybe one more thing. We'll do one more thing. So, um, on the very first day of our trip to uh, the beach uh, this past week, we turned on the TV. I tweeted about this, and literally nobody responded. <laughs> um, but the very first day, we turned on the TV just to find something to watch. TV was super complicated. We didn't even really care to try to change the channel or figure out how things worked. And... There, it, I, I don't even understand how this works in particular, but there is a station called Pluto TV, and they run just old shows constantly over and over and over again. And like, if you have a, a, a smart TV that also has like digital channels, they have the option for you to watch some old shows only on one channel. <laughs> like they have one for the monsters and they've got it for the Mary Tyler Moore show and everything. But the one that we got locked into was the love boat. Oh my God, dude. I am so addicted to this show. <laughs> uh, it is amazing. It is it, like, not even in an ironic way. Like I literally, at every time that an episode came on, I've just enjoyed every second of it. Um, the theme song has been stuck in my head for about 12 days now, uh, <laughs> and it probably will never leave my brain. Um, and I, I just, I, it's so, it's so funny and seventies humor and just garish and goofy and, all over the place and i i want more people to watch it i want to do a podcast on it honestly like reviewing each episode and you know doing it for however long it would take me to but it it's so it's so good it's Put so Gringer, Gringer so good on that podcast with you bro i would be all over that We'd have her as a, like, Lucy and me do a podcast, and then Grand Grand's on, like, uh, every third episode or something, where she's like, oh, the love boat, and uh, the yeah. dock was just my my favorite, and then the, uh, George Van Patten would show up, and she, anyway, I, such a fun show, man. I, I love it so much, and I, I love love. That's that's <laughs> the end of my tips and bits for this I week. Love but love. I love love, dude. It's and and I feel love very brave for saying another. that. So, no, I love love too. Yeah, we're very we're, brave I'll, here at this My Bourbon Podcast. I know, I know. I feel like I just had a full ass confessional a come a to, come to ago. Jesus moment. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it's important for you to uh, if you're listening to the show, I. Uh, Take stock of your your emotional inventory uh, and potentially come to Jesus and support. This is a horrible segue that I've done. Uh, uh, support <laughs> this show. And uh, Eric's going to be your yeah. Sherpa towards letting you know how you can do such a thing. Uh, sure. So, Eric, how can people find us and, and support the show and yeah. do all the things yeah. that keep us flowing and afloat and... Uh, Cruising along much like the love boat did throughout the 70s and 80s. <laughs> Just call him Captain Steubing. And, and you know what? I'll be your, your assistant purser. I'll be, I'll be gopher. I'll be gopher. All right. <laughs> I mean, we'll just sail along to patreon.com where you can just save Sailing up for... Sailing takes you can me save away. Up 
where four I'm quarters. Going for as little as four quarters. You can support the show. And at five dollars. I'm so tired, dude. <laughs> you get all the uncut stuff. All the stuff Perry didn't cut out of this. All the bonus episodes. Sample irresistible. The pregame chats. Pours from the floor. Shit you don't even know you're missing because you're not on the Patreon. Just do it. Because we got bills to pay. We got mouse to feed. We got lots to pay the bills on. We got computers to buy when we break them. And we got bottles to get to review. So, patreon.com slash Podcast. If you want to send us an email, you can ask us to review something. You can send us a sample. You can send us uh, a pairing suggestion. Send an email to thisismybourbonshop at gmail.com. If you want to leave a message on the barrel ring segment, which I want one, somebody send the barrel rings, call 859-428-8253 and leave a voicemail. And we'll play it on the air and we'll reply to you. Uh, if you want to get some merchant apparel, it's bourbonshop.threadless.com or whiskeymutant.shopify.com. Then on all social media, it's at my bourbon pod. Um, you can follow Perry at P Ritter seventeen ninety two. You can follow sorry. me at. <laughs> sorry, I just looked to see when the last time we had a barrel ring was, March twenty fourth. Oh, come on, people! Fucking That's wake up! Let's way go. Way too long. That Let's is go. way too long. Come on, tell us anything on there. Um, but yeah, on all social media at my bourbon pod. P. Ritter 1792 at Whiskey Mutant. Uh, we have a Facebook group where uh, Swan, the former co host, but still kind of the co host coming back, is going on a rampage. Um, I'll be back. I'm, a, I'm apparently banned from Facebook and I don't know when they'll let me back in. So I can't comment or hardly see anything on there. So I don't know what Swan's saying about me. Apparently he did because he sent me a message about it. Um, you can go to YouTube. This is my bourbon podcast. Every Thursday night, Perry goes live. I try to join him once a month. Um, all the video versions of the podcast you're listening to, if you want to see our handsome, sexy faces, you can go to This Is My Bourbon Podcast on YouTube. And then just leave a review or just tell people about us. We're on all your favorite podcast shit. Uh, send a letter to your friend that you, your pen pal that you made up or you haven't um, talked to in a while. Tell them to uh, listen to the show that they made up. Yeah, the pen pal they the, made the, up. It literally does not help us at all. <laughs> with but growth. it motivates people <laughs> to send letters to other people. Just you just never letter, know. Just letters going to one two three Candy Cane Lane, you addressed to Santa Claus. Like they'll hey. eventually get to somebody. They'll, the mailman will put them in somebody's letter box. Fantastic. Um, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, our, my favorite, my favorite listeners are the the made up pen pals. Uh, golly. good night. That's it. We'll good see morning. Next. Good afternoon. Whatever time you are listening to, we love you, Eric. I'll see you in about twelve hours, and I'll see the listeners in about. Uh, a week? <laughs> What's that noise? Anyway. Um, <laughs> see you next time, but until then, Perry. And this is my bourbon podcast.